Hey guys, I'm Zemo the Dad and DPS and we are back once again with another video. Now today's video is in relation to rifle builds. Now what do I mean about rifle builds? Well there's two different types, there's rifleman and there is commando and we're going to go into a full health version of each of these builds. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and let's get on with the show. So we're going to start off with the build and I'm going to briefly explain what you can do in terms of these perks. Now a lot of the perks on here are general utility as well as helping optimise the build. You can optimise this build even further by taking certain perks out and then replacing the perk points with certain other things. It's all down to personal preference but this gives you a general framework to work with. Now in strength we have 10 and with the perks we have strong back, bandolier, blocker and bare arms now bare arms and strong back as well as bandolier are there just for carry weight and reducing the weight of other things you could argue removing strong back for the one that removes the weight from explosives but that's what i have on here at the moment now in the perception tree we have all three of the commando perks and a note i would make is these can be easily just swapped out for the opposite end of the tree the rifleman perks which will obviously give rifles better damage the great thing about commando and uh just generally commando and um rifleman is they pretty much are the same build all the perks that are relevant work together then we have tank killer which obviously gives you armor penetration as well as a chance to stagger very important perk one of the best ones out of all the rifle specific perks that you can get then in this section, Endurance is the crappest tree that you get. We have free, and in there we have Fireproof, and that's basically just to remove the explosive and flame attacks damage by 45%. Charisma tree, now the two important perks here are Tenderizer and Strange in Numbers. Tenderizer is obviously going to give you that 10% damage buff when you attack an enemy and they then take basically 10% more damage. Strange in numbers, it makes your mutation stronger. And then we have Inspirational in the last slot, um, which gives you more XP. Now you can take Inspirational out, take off the Charisma uh, perks there, and then divide it up between wherever you want it to be in this kind of thing um it's really up to yourself it doesn't matter a hundred percent but yeah you could do that so for example you could take inspirational away add another point to perception get concentrated fire up to rank three or put it in rank one and have the um grenadier perk if you're using explosives it's really up to yourself there's loads of different ways you can go about it but that's the general gist i use it for main utility leveling all that kind of things now in the intelligence street we have batteries included and we have gunsmith the thing about the two perks here is if you're using an explosive weapon you remove gunsmith and then you put in demolition expert instead so that it really depends on what type of weapon you're using if you're using faster fire rate you have gunsmith if you're using explosive you have demolition expert it's quite simple and as i said eight points intelligence then in the agility tree we have a bunch of different things we have action girl through hiker for that weight reduction on drinks and food gun foot rank one because quite frankly more often than not i don't really get the chance to use it very often um things die pretty quickly adrenaline which is again one of the best perks that you can get for any build um for that 60 percent damage bonus mr sandman for the extra damage i get from stealth attacking things and one rank of sneak just to make myself a little bit more sneaky and the reason for that is mainly because um, this build can be used both in and out of stealth. It really just depends on what you want to do. Now, in the last tree, we have Luck uh, at 15. We have Grim Reaper Sprint, Better Criticals, Four Leaf Clover, Class Freak, Starch Jeans, and Critical Savvy. Now, the reason we've got both Critical Savvy and Better Criticals is because being full health, you don't have that raw 
damage. Um, Bloodied is the best kind of damaging type in game. Combine it with all the kind of things that help boost that. You're just not getting the same damage output. So we are relying on our criticals doing even more. And four leaf clovers there just so that we get you know extra criticals if we can. You can replace that for one rank of bloodied mess. It really just depends. Grim Reaper Sprint can be swapped out depending on how big the enemy is. So for example, against like a a um, bigger enemy I'd remove Grim Reaper Sprint for Tormentor because I know I'm not really going to get the benefit of killing things and getting the VAT point back so like your Super Mutants, Beh Behemoth, Scorch Beast Queen, Errol, um, Mirelurk Queens, take Grim Reaper Sprint off it's really not going to do you any good um, and that's the general gist of why we're using these builds uh, for more specifics about perks definitely leave it down in the comment but realistically you guys can read perks you can pause this video this is the build that i'm currently using as i said you can swap some things around based on personal preference but this is the basic gist of what i have so after the actual build, we'll go into the legendary perks. Now, the three legendary perks that are the most important here are intelligence, perception, and agility. The reason why I'm saying these are the most important is because it spells out IPA, which is a type of beer. Um, but no, that's that's not really it. It really doesn't matter what ones you get here, as long as you are going to use at least five perk points, or rather six per tree. Um, it's that's all that really matters about these perception is one of the most important for a commando or rifleman build because you will literally always try and max out your perception your agility has a lot of decent effects in there as well and quite often you're going to be using things like demolition expert or the um, ammo one so those are important the next ones are the ones that are subjective and you can change that depending on what you want to go for because i like to view this build as a more survivable build i will went for what rad so that continually i would get rid of radiation damage i wouldn't need to use any rad away that kind of thing and my character would be able to just focus on just being tanky and survivable on top of that funky dodds reducing that poison damage means that certain enemies such as the mirelurk queens and whatnot wouldn't be able to whittle me down with poison damage obviously these aren't maxed out but that is the kind of idea between these two and then you have things like taking one for the team now i spend a lot of my time not stealthing therefore taking one for the team and getting that extra damage bonus is more important to me than getting the stealth damage bonus from the other perks such as what's it called da, 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 da. follow through so that it's very much a very personal preference i find with that one you either go for follow through or you go for taking one for the team going for both is a little bit offhand i know quite a lot of people will also just have master infiltrator therefore just lock picking in general realistically legendary perks can be very subjective but i find that these ones are the ones that work for me so now we're going to talk about buffs now Typically, the chem of choice for me is going to be something like Psycho Buff. And the reason for that is that 25% damage. You also get free, uh, free strength, free endurance, and max health for three minutes. Um, overall, 25% damage is nothing to sniff at. Free strength is more carry weight. Endurance is more HP, and HP is more HP. Overall, this thing just makes you tankier and stronger in general, as well as able to move stuff around. So it's a good and easy thing to just pop before a big target, just to bring them down quicker. However, if you're not really interested in using chems in-game, you don't really need to. Um, this build can get away without it quite easily, but that is something that I definitely recommend you use if you're wanting the maximum amount of damage you can get. The next thing I would say in terms of buffs is Blight Soup. This is going to give additional uh, crit damage and it does work in tandem with the Herbivore perk. So you get a little bit more out of this Blight Soup than you would out of having Carnivore or not having either. So next we're going to discuss my mutations. The ones that we have on here are Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Egghead, Herbivore, Marsupial, Scaly Skin and Speed Demon. The Speed Demon's here for the reload speed, which is always useful on rifles, movement speed, and then Scaly Skin for the damage resist and energy resist, Marsupial for that carry weight and jump height, Herbivore for the increased veggie benefits, Egghead for that sweet intelligence buff, 
eagle eyes for the crit damage as well as the perception buff and bird bones for that agility and reduced fall speed which is pretty significant now in terms of armor we also have a full solar set ideally this is the kind of thing that you realistically want you want an overeaters ultra light solar armor left arm or whatever it depends on what you want to put on here but i went for the ultra light build mainly just to reduce the weight of this thing and increase my you know maneuverability you can put some other things on here it's really up to yourself but as you can see we have radiation resistance and weapon weight reduction now the reason i want weapon weight reduction on a piece of armor is because i carry a lot of weapons around typically so this helps me carry more stuff you could make the argument that sentinels would be best here and that's the um 15% damage reduction 75% of the time effect if you have enough piece of armor that you are effectively immortal but this is more of a utility build and an easy playing build for me but this is my idea of basically a near perfect set radiation resistance you can replace with many things in that slot but this is generally what I would want to see on each and every piece of armor so this next part of the video is going to be weapons. Now, realistically, when it comes to any commando or rifleman weapon will work with this build. It's more a case of how this build does in comparison. Commando is always going to be the stronger of the two, but it gives you a little idea of how much damage you can do in tandem, in and out of stealth. So first off is this weapon, Liquid Snickers, Anti-Armor, Vats Crits, faster movement speed while aiming. It isn't really relevant outside of that, but we are going to use it on Jeff and see how much damage we do to him and how quickly we kill him. So this kind of section is going to be pretty much just Jeff murder. So as you're seeing, we're doing about 300 damage per individual shot. We're going to wait until he gets up because hitting him while he's roaring usually doesn't spell very good. Crit of 800 odd and you're seeing we're killing him fairly quickly, fairly easily. There's no problem with this weapon whatsoever. Jeff goes down really quick and with no, <laughs> no effort. Next example is the Juggernaut Suppressed Gauss Rifle. Last shot, faster reload. This one is one of my favourite little gimmicky weapons but you're going to get to see how much damage this thing can really deal especially in vats crits um, it is a suppressed weapon so the damage is quite hefty before it even gets to the crit stage and as you're seeing jeff doesn't really stand much of a chance against this weapon especially with 1500 crits and then i don't even really need to care about this point he goes down so quick. This gun is fantastic. And this isn't even the best variation of it. Now, we've swapped to the commando side of things here. We have a fixer with vampire replenish action points with each kill and vats action point cost. Now, not the most ideal weapon for fighting Jeff because the two main effects aren't really going to play much part in that. But you're going to get to see how much damage this thing can output regardless of being optimized for like pure damage just seeing before Jeff's even got up we've taken out a big chunk of his health and if he hadn't decided to go invincible there for a couple of seconds we wouldn't have got as far down the clip it just completely shreds him so the last weapon we're going to test is the quadruple ammo capacity bullets explode for area damage uh, railway rifle this is the only non-stealth weapon we're using and we do have demolition expert on for this as well just to give you the full idea of how much damage it's going to do now the thing about any weapon that is non-stealth you can usually get that first shot in without it being stealthed uh, well not without it being stealth you can usually get the first shot in stealthed um, but it depends on what happens but we're just going to wait for Jeff to get up as you can see this is a legendary Jeff and I'm not going to stop the video because of that we're just going to completely devastate him with this weapon and this kind of shows how powerful 
the well the railway rifle in itself is and we're just going to wait until our ap gets regenerated back up now this is a legendary jeff this is not an ordinary jeff we're fighting we would have already killed jeff like four times over by now um but he wanted to make it difficult so let's make his life difficult and blow his face off as you're seeing, the crits, the damage we're doing was just insane. Jeff does not stand a chance against this build. Now I've shown you all the perks and how this build works. Now I'm going to go into the general reason why I use it and how it works for me. The general rule of thumb is that when I'm going around Appalachia and I cannot be bothered playing a bloodied build because bloodied builds are so easy to die in, I just want something that's relaxing that I can just go about and brutally murder things at my leisure now you're seeing this build isn't the most damaging the most um, overpowered build in the game however it is consistent and it allows me in order to basically just play and do what i want as long as i want with a vampire weapon equipped i am nigh immortal against most enemies because of a combination of the solar armor which is continually regenerating my health while i'm above a certain percentage of health and on top of that we have just decent damage you don't need the most op damage in the game in order to kill basically scrub enemies there's so many enemies in the game that literally do not need the best damage in the game. As you're seeing, Super Mutants, which are some of the tankier enemies in the game, don't last very long against this build. one shot in them with crits is fairly easy, and I am critting fairly often. The main problem you run into is accuracy. And since the, the kind of VATS fix that they did in the game, VATS isn't as accurate as it can be. But with a lot of these weapons the ammo can be quite conservative i mean the, the the lever action rifle that you're seeing on screen doesn't take a lot of shots to kill things so you can use it to farm ammo and things like daily ops especially when you come up against enemies that are flimsier such as humans humans are like one of the weakest enemies in the game against super mutants yeah you've got obviously the the, the damage that they can do as well as the kind of armor resistance that they've got but they're still relatively weak against getting shot in the face and when you're using weapons like the Gauss rifle or the Fixer or the Railway rifle, you have some of the best damage per shot in game. And you're just going to slaughter things. It's just a very consistent and easy build to use. You don't need realistically a full set of unyielding armor which is kind of the hardest part of a bloody build is getting that unyielding set and don't get me wrong you can probably buy unyielding stuff relatively cheap but if you're wanting a specific armor set with unyielding on it can be a little bit difficult so you have to take that into consideration either way guys that's that so that was today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can buy our merchandise as you can see on the screen at the Teespring link down below, as well as our super thanks button on all of our videos. On top of that, we also have our coffee QR code on screen and you can become a channel member. And on the note of the members, let's thank them. And first, let's thank the chosen undad. We have Goldie, Dealfin Gaming, the BDP, Bubba Doodle Mom, Scott S, TV Archive, Philip Duda, Cole, PT Buns, and Peggy McKnight, as well as our dad's army members, White Blackburn, Rollers, Me, Colin G, Metasbo, Numpty, Sickle Man, James Colshred, Prophet Seven Dot Back, Country Boy Stevens, Reaper Gaming 92, Victrix, Evil Rap, Folly Boras, and Nafra, and Blue Eagle Productions. So, guys, obviously, I'm not one for making many build videos, but if you do enjoy this, definitely comment down below what you liked about it, what you would know more about, all that kind of thing, and I will potentially make more of these in the near future this is all about just coming out my wheelhouse try to figure out what you guys enjoy watching and with that we'll catch you next time in the wasteland